Uh, welcome everybody to today's presentation on why you need to add smartphones and tablets to your learning environment. Um, I'm Aaron Pulley. I'm the parent and student engagement consultant for the Hamilton Wentworth District School Board. And my role is to work with uh, uh, teachers and administrators to help to design uh, uh, innovative and exciting programs to enable students to be uh, better engaged in their learning and for parents to also have a window and access uh, and opportunity to uh, engaging in that learning experience of their, uh, of their children um, beyond just receiving uh, newsletters, but actually, you know, like coming in, working with the teachers, collaborating with administrators, and really uh, rolling their sleeves up and, and getting involved in the learning of their, uh, of their children. So, today's presentation is all about, as we said earlier, about um, smartphones and tablets. I don't uh, necessarily like to use the word smartphones, but more smart devices and tablets, as we're not really focusing on the phones, and the word phone is... Uh, is the problematic aspect often to this conversation. So we're going to focus in on, uh, say, smart devices, uh, more appropriately termed, and tablets. Um, so this presentation was uh, given to uh, Offshia, the uh, Ontario Family Studies and Home Economics Educators Association, um, on November the 5th. And as promised, this is the screencast to accompany that presentation and uh, is also now, by virtue of technology, available to all of the other members of Afshia who were not able to attend uh, the session and anybody else who happens to visit blogucation.com, my online virtual uh, professional learning environment. So, uh, we are going to talk about smartphones and tablets and I want to take you as mentioned, to blogucation.com. This is my personal professional blog, um, and uh, you may notice right off the bat under blogucation it says pulley in the hood. Um, the hood is the science hood, which is a virtual online learning environment that was developed by my wife and myself as a virtual learning uh, environment beyond the uh, brick and mortar walls of the classroom and into a more uh, kind of virtual world where the learning continues. So from this point of view, we, uh, my wife and I don't actually like to use the word classroom. We use the words uh, learning environment because learning takes place everywhere. Um, it's not restricted anymore by the, uh, as I mentioned, uh, brick and mortar walls of the classroom. What learning happens in the hallway, it happens in the cafeteria, it happens outside uh, on break, it happens uh, on your walk home. Learning happens everywhere. And from this point, we are not leaving it in the classroom. Uh, it is, uh, the conversation continues. So any conversations, any discussions, any learning that began in the classroom can continue elsewhere. And it also gives students the opportunity to uh, collaborate with uh, their peers, to collaborate with their teacher as co-learners, and gives a 24-7, uh, 365 uh, opportunity uh, for assessment for as and of learning to continue. So when you see Aaron in the hood, that uh, my uh, blogucation.com will take you to my section uh, on the science hood, which has affectionately been termed the hood by the students. Um, this uh, aspect I won't continue with much further, as that's a, that's a concept for a whole other screencast. So just to take you back to, uh, to blogucation, and just to, just to uh, help you understand what it means for pulling the hood, we will look down at the uh, resources that are available for this screencast. Um, two, two resources. I'm going to skip the first one for now and just kind of scroll down to why you need to add smartphones and tablets to your learning environment. Now, for those of you who are members of Afshia and you uh, saw my presentation at uh, Maple High School, you will see that you have a tab up here located beside ISTE. That's the presentation um, in Philadelphia that my wife and I presented, and we're hoping for San Diego this year. But beside uh, ISTE is Afshia for you. And you will notice if you click that, that these two uh, resources that I developed are available there for you. So why you need to add s smartphones and tablets in your learning environment? 
just going to do a very, very, like, two-second overview here just to remind us. We talked about it a fair amount today for those of you who are, uh, who are with me. But this is that blog post that I shared with you today that talks about the origins of the cell phone in 1983 uh, when the cost was about $4,000. Walks you through the evolution of the cell phone through to the smartphone um, and the percentages of... Uh, teen users of smartphones from 2004 to 2010 showing of course a continual rise and growth in the in the users from 45% in 2004 to 75% in 2010 right through the usages of cell phones with teens from texting um, we talked about how uh, teens don't like to email uh, by this particular study from the uh, Pew uh, research and, uh, and technology group and uh, also to see that uh, teens use their phones primarily for um, you know the top five are text messaging pictures um, taking them and exchanging them playing music and recording video and playing games and all of these aspects can be captured and harnessed for learning um, as well these are the two videos I'll leave you them for you to uh, to to explore as well as the ideas of policies and directions that are uh, are uh, uh, instituted in a number of, of school boards and maybe a challenge for a number of us as we are moving forward in wanting to use um, portable and mobile devices and cell phones in our classrooms when we have to overcome um, previously established policies and directions that may need to be challenged um, in today's day and age when uh, the devices are, uh, uh, are multi-devices. They, they, they aren't, as I like to put it, one-trick ponies in which they only do one thing. They do many things, and if we're talking about putting the phone away, then uh, perhaps we're talking about putting the phone on airplane mode or shutting the phone functionality off and allowing all of the other usages to take place. Um, you'll also see in this particular blog post that I uh, discussed the growing success document as issued by the Ontario Ministry of Education, which very uh, strongly emphasizes assessment as of and for learning, and the ability to differentiate instruction is uh, more prevalent with the use of mobile technology and in uh, using what the students have um, on their person. So if they're already bringing them into our classrooms, knowing full well that resources are scarce, and that the purchasing of multiple technological units uh, may be difficult. Um, it probably is the, uh, the best thing and the smartest thing that we can do as educators to use what students are bringing with them rather than thinking we have to provide them for them. Um, so uh, there's also the idea of universal design for learning which follows along with differentiated instruction, um, which uh, allows the usage of these uh, small devices, uh, whether they be uh, smartphones, whether they be tablets, or any other mobile device, so uh, that students can have multiple pathways, multiple entry points, and can, uh, can access the learning at their just right time when it is most beneficial for them, rather than sitting in... Uh, rather than sitting and having to listen to a, to a full class instruction which may or may not be uh, appropriate um, at that time and that's what our mobile devices allows us um, to to capture so I invite you please to leave uh, replies um, to this particular post to me and uh, and to leave me your thoughts and so that we too can engage as co-learners in uh, in the discussion and in the dialogue as to how we could use um, these devices, keeping in mind the statistics that show us that um, teenagers um, are uh, are using these devices quite regularly in their social lives, and uh, how we can uh, harness that um, for their learning experiences. So you'll also see um, under your Afshia tab that the uh, PowerPoint that we looked at and that we will explore further here on smartphones and tablets for uh, teaching and learning is also here for you with all of the uh, apps and the slides that we will be talking about as well as a series of resources and downloads for using these particular devices in your classroom and all of the information that you need um, to get you to get you going.
So from that point, we will go back to the presentation and we will start looking at our applications and what we can use in a learning environment as far as mobile devices are concerned. So we've looked at blogeducation.com. Please check here regularly. I, I continually post resources and tips and tricks for, for educators and a lot of the things that I, uh, that I learn and explore. And I try to walk you through them as, uh, as concisely as possible um, to try and make uh, everything for you easy and to try and basically uh, remove the, the mystery and the enigma of using devices because uh, it is, it's pretty straightforward once you get your head wrapped around it. At first it may seem intimidating, it may seem confusing, but uh, once, you, once you kind of figure out that it's, uh, uh, it's all, as long as you have the proper connections, as long as you have the proper cables, and um, once you understand how they work and how they don't work, then I think you'll find that they're, uh, that they're pretty straightforward. But we also have to keep in mind that not every student is bringing the same device to our classroom. So this particular presentation will focus mainly on Apple and on Android devices, um, but uh, we also know that BlackBerry is looming in the background, and I do apologize, but uh, this particular presentation does not, uh, does not address the, uh, the BlackBerry um, um, usage as well, which we know students are using. So um, that's something I probably will have to uh, explore at some point.